Hello all! Today I want to talk about some of my favorite games from the 2010s. I admittedly haven't played too many games that came out in the past decade. Life always has a way of keeping me busy, so a lot of titles tend to slip by. But, there are still a lot of titles that come to mind that describes the cream of the crop, for me anyway, from the past decade. I did my best to go through the list of games that I played and picked from a variety of genres. That being said, here are my top 11 games from the 2010s. Number 11, Skylanders Spyro's Adventure. I'm picking Spyro's Adventure based on the overall concept of the Toys to Life idea. I love the idea of having a physical representation of the characters that I'm playing in game. The idea is a bit ingenious, but a little bit insidious as well. The concept of Toys to Life is ingenious because A, the figures look amazing, and B, they're incorporated into the game in a fun way. The figures can be played cross-platform, so you can use your favorite character on various systems that the game was released on, assuming you have the game in the portal, that is. You can also use your favorite characters in most, if not all, of the games. Granted, I haven't played all the Skylanders games yet, so I'm not entirely sure. The characters' levels and stats are also stored in the figure, so you can use your maxed out Skylander on later installments. In fact, some later games allow you to level up your characters even further than the previous titles. That being said, the Toys to Life concept is a bit insidious because you have to purchase each character separately. The main game comes with three characters, so the rest of the characters are akin to DLC. And at $10 to $15 a figure, that could get pretty expensive pretty quickly. There are also additional levels you could purchase in the form of figures as well. All in all, I think the Toys to Life idea is a really cool concept, even though it kind of has been done to death at this point with Disney Infinity and the Amiibos. To quote Marge Simpson, I just think they're neat. That being said though, Spyro's Adventure was really unique for its time and very fun as well. The game is mission based and has a ton of extra stuff to do. It's a good game and Skylanders itself is a fun series. I definitely recommend it. Number 10, The Shore's Wrath. Every time I think of this game, I go back to another Simpsons quote. This time, it's Nelson with his Grapes of Wrath diorama. Here's the Ashura, and here's the Wrath! And yes, those are my amazing Microsoft, I mean, Photoshop skills. <laughs> anyway, this game is hard to categorize. Is it a 3D beat-em-up? Is it a fighting game? Is it a space shoot-em-up? <laughs> Who knows? But I will say, this game is able to blend all these features into one action-packed game. The story, though, is where this game shines. The world is being overwhelmed by a demonic force known as the Goma. Advanced godlike cyborgs, also known as the Eight Guardian Generals, seek to destroy this evil and purify Gaia, which is basically this game's Earth. It's nonsensical and mostly over the top and gets very crazy very quickly, but I really enjoyed it. My only one issue with this game was that it was shipped unfinished. You have to purchase DLC to actually get the full ending, otherwise the game ends on a cliffhanger. The ending is definitely worth it though, so get it if you can. Sony has already begun to delist PS3 related things, so it is possible that the ending has already been removed since writing this, so make sure to grab it if you see it. Number 9, Hotline Miami. This game is a top-down shooter game reminiscent of original GTA titles, but with double the violence and gore. There are several chapters or levels in the game, and they all increase in difficulty very quickly. You die in one hit, but the game allows you to start over right away in the beginning of the section. Normally this would annoy me since I died often while playing this, but the fact that you start over right away makes it somewhat more tolerable. You just have to plan your attack carefully and take your time. The game also includes a lot of collectibles to search for and has two different endings, although they are a bit samey. There are also different masks that you can unlock, either by completing levels or finding them hidden throughout the levels. These masks grant you special abilities during your mission, such as seeing hidden items or knocking out enemies in one punch. Overall, the graphics are bright and colorful and the action is gruesome. The story is a little confusing at times, but snippets of what's happening can be picked up during the intermission scenes where the character is walking around his apartment and also before and after levels. The music is also badass. I highly recommend this one. 
Number 8. Batman Arkham City. Arkham Asylum is an amazing game and worthy of all the praise that it received when it first came out. In fact, it would be on this list if it had come out just a few years later. However, fast forward two years later and Rocksteady not only brings back the greatness of Asylum, but also improves upon it. For instance, free flow combat was great in Asylum, but it is a thing of beauty in this game. The gameplay has been improved and your arsenal has expanded as well. Fighting bad guys has never been more fun. Also, instead of being confined to just the Asylum or Arkham Island, you're now within the walls of Arkham City, a super prison that encloses the urban slums of Gotham City. More of Batman's rogues gallery is present in this game and it is amazing. Villains that were missing from the last game are present in this game and they look great. With the exception of a few, but I'm willing to give it a pass. The developers even mixed it up and gave the player a choice to play as Catwoman as well. It isn't my favorite thing to do in the game, mostly because I don't like Catwoman's gadgets, but it is a nice addition to the game. The developers also took a lot of liberties with the characters from the comic universe. For instance, and spoilers by the way, they were ballsy enough to kill off a main character. One complaint I have about the game is that it's just a little too short for me. The side quests help pad out the gameplay, but the main story can be completed within roughly 10 hours. That being said, this is probably my favorite entry in the Arkham series, and you should definitely give it a go if you haven't. Number 7. Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2 For those that visit Ghetto Gamer regularly, you might have seen my review of Dragon Ball Xenoverse. If not, shame on you. <laughs> There's a link down in the description if you're curious. I love Dragon Ball Xenoverse because it created a new unique experience based off the Dragon Ball universe. I had my issues with it, but I still contend that it is a great game. Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2 takes all the issues that I had with the first game and completely fixes them. Having trouble unlocking moves or outfits due to the random number generator? Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2 fixes that. Having trouble getting a mentor to spawn? Well, Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2 fixes that too. Wish races other than Saiyan could transform? Pfft, now they can. The gameplay has also been upgraded and it feels like a more refined experience than the first game. Not only that, but this game provides more characters to unlock and also brings movie characters into the fold. I have my reservations about playing Dragon Ball Z games nowadays because every game is almost always the same, that is, play through the Saiyan Saga to the Buu Saga, but Xenoverse 1 changes it up a bit by adding new scenarios and villains. Xenoverse 2 has you play through the main series and some of the super series, and also adds movie villains to the main story. It's a change of pace, and it really works. If you're a fan of Dragon Ball Z and all the Dragon Ball Z games, and you haven't tried this game, I suggest you give it a go. Number 6, Catherine. Catherine is, at heart, a puzzle game that also features social simulation elements during the non-puzzle parts. It also features a morality system that leads to one of the game's several endings. There are eight endings in all, but in reality, there's actually only three true endings. The game also features amazing music, including classical remixes for the gameplay segments, jazz for the quiet bar scenes, and symphonic music for the animated cutscenes. The story revolves around Vincent Brooks, a 32-year-old man who does his best to avoid being an adult. His girlfriend, Catherine, with a K, wants to get married, but Vincent is unsure or unwilling. Vincent and Catherine have been dating for five years, and she's getting tired of Vincent's indecisiveness. Vincent spends most of his nights at a local bar, The Stray Sheep. He meets a younger woman named Catherine, with a C this time, and ends up spending the night with her. Catherine continues to romance Vincent, and now the player is left to make choices for Vincent. Does he remain faithful to Catherine with a K, or does he decide to go for Catherine with a C? All the while, Vincent is plagued by nightmares where he must navigate a tower by pushing and climbing on blocks. The block towers are a very interesting puzzle mechanic, and I really enjoyed it. There are even challenge stages to attempt after you complete the main game, as well as challenge stages you can play in the Stray Sheep arcade cabinet. All in all, the story is pretty unique and the puzzles are pretty challenging. I definitely recommend it. Number 5. Super Smash Brothers Ultimate I love me some Smash Brothers. 
I always get excited when a new game in the series comes out because I love the trailers that Nintendo puts together for the new fighters. I always hate it when we lost characters from one edition to the next, though. I guess I wasn't the only one who felt this way because Smash Bros. Ultimate was announced and released with all of the characters from the previous games, as well as completely new characters. All of your favorite characters are back, and they are better than ever. Speaking of, characters are still being added via DLC. While I normally hate DLC, I like seeing the characters from other series being brought in, such as the Dragon Quest heroes or Banjo and Kazooie. The story mode makes a comeback as well, and I'm very happy to see it returned. I really like Subspace Emissary, and was very disappointed when the Wii U version didn't have something similar. The story mode in this game provides a lot of content, and is a very welcome addition. Gameplay has also been refined, and everything controls great. The music is also very exceptional as well, but it's Smash Brothers, what do you expect? The developers removed trophies from this game, however, they added spirits. Same thing collectible-wise, but you can level these spirits up and use them for added bonuses during the story or missions. The developers also added a feature to play most levels as a Final Destination type stage. It adds a lot of variety for those that like to play certain ways. Anyone who is a fan of the previous installments will definitely appreciate this game. Number 4. The Binding of Isaac while I'm not the best at roguelike type games, I do enjoy them. Azure Dreams is one of my favorites from the genre, but The Binding of Isaac came along and easily dethroned it. The story is simple. You venture into your mom's basement after she receives a message from God stating that she should kill her son Isaac. <sighs> story as old as time. <laughs> anyway. Like most roguelike games, The Binding of Isaac is a unique experience every time you play it as the dungeon maps change every playthrough. While some of the rooms are repeated, the order in which you experience them is altered. Every time you meet certain goals or beat the game, you unlock new items, dungeon areas, or bosses. This game provides an enormous amount of replayability given that there are a variety of power-up items, enemies, playable characters, and bosses. It'll definitely keep you busy as you explore the depths of Mom's Basement. Number 3 Terraria. The late 2000s and early 2010s saw the influx of sandbox games that heavily feature crafting. My favorite amongst all of the titles out there is Terraria. Like The Binding of Isaac, there are tons of items to collect, numerous monsters, characters, items to unlock and craft, and various things to find. You can customize your character in almost any way you want and create countless procedurally generated worlds to explore. Given the amount of customization, this game has a ton of replayability as well. The developers are continuously adding more to this game, and the PC version finally has an enemy that serves as the final boss. I highly recommend giving this game a try if you haven't already. Number 2. Undertale I am a huge fan of the JRPG genre. It has been my favorite from the time of the 16-bit generation. And while most JRPGs have kind of strayed from the games of the past, with most becoming action RPG oriented, Undertale comes in, brings back turn-based combat, but is still able to redefine the genre. While Undertale brings back turn-based combat, it adds new features to keep it fresh and new, with the addition of shoot 'em up style minigames during the fight scenes. The gameplay is a huge win in my book, but what sets it apart from other modern RPGs is the cast of characters. Each character has their own personality and you get to know them better as the story progresses, assuming you show them mercy. In this game, you're able to fight monsters like any typical JRPG or show them mercy. Fighting gives you experience and money while showing mercy just gives you gold and allows the enemies to live. What's the difference in gameplay styles? I'll let you play that and figure it out for yourself. Number 1. Super Mario Odyssey I didn't have much knowledge on Super Mario Odyssey before I purchased it. I just wanted a new 3D Mario game I could play with my kids since they enjoyed watching me play Super Mario 64. This game takes everything great from previous 3D Mario titles and improves upon them dramatically. This has got to be the best 3D Mario game that I have ever played. 
The controls are fantastic. The story is fun. The music is great. There's tons of collectibles. And the addition of Cappy enhances the gameplay experience. Cappy introduces several gameplay mechanics that allows Mario to possess various enemies, and grab coins that are far away, and can even extend Mario's jump so he can reach other platforms. The controls are easy to pick up, but hard to master. Once you do though, you're in for an amazing experience. The game follows typical 3D Super Mario games where you're running around and collecting things. In this game you're collecting moons this time around, but the stars from Super Mario 64 do make an appearance. In fact, that's actually one thing that I love about this game is that there's a lot of callbacks to Super Mario 64. There are so many moons to collect in this game, over 800 in fact, but it doesn't feel like a hassle to collect them all. Super Mario Odyssey provides a good challenge, especially during the later stages, and is just all around fun. And for those reasons, it cements itself at the number one spot on the top of this list. And that does it for my top 11 from the 2010s, but what are some of your favorites? Let me know down in the comments, and as always, thanks for watching.